Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here, got another Pokemon Pocket deck profile for you. This time we're covering Articuno EX. Uh, very much so, that deck name is applicable because it is the only Pokemon that we are playing in our entire deck. Uh, you may have heard of this little gimmick before, but we're taking advantage of a built-in game rule for Pokemon Pocket that you will always open one of your basic Pokemon, at least one of them in your opening hand. So, if we're only playing Articuno EX, we'll always open Articuno EX. In order to achieve this, we're playing 18 trainer cards. So, our deck list is going to be 2 Articuno EX, 2 Potion, 2 XP, 2 Pokeball, 2 Hand uh, Scout? Is that what that card's called? Um, <laughs> and Scope, that's what it is. We're going to use that right now and look at our opponent's hand here. Uh, we are also on to Red Card, to uh, Professor's Research, to Misty, to Giovanni, to Sabrina. So, uh, we're definitely looking to use Misty on turn one like we're about to do right here. Uh, ideally, this will get our Articuno three energy or at least two. Uh, here we're going to get a whopping zero, <laughs> uh, as is, I'm finding pretty typical when you're the one using Misty. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so we are definitely looking to just control the game with Articuno and our trainers, and I definitely would consider this a control deck. Um, I should have saved that hand scope. This was quite literally my first game with the deck, but I learned pretty quickly that hand scope plus red card is a very real way to threaten your opponent. Uh, you get a lot of information, and you can, at a whim, uh, you know, basically force them to put their hand back, so... And, of course, we have just general good trainers on top of that. Stuff you would expect to see uh, in decks like Potions, Speed, Pokeball, Professor's Research, Giovanni, Sabrina, all that fun stuff. So, okay, here I know my opponent has two Potions, so I do have the option to put them back if that ends up being relevant with the red card. But for now, I'm just going to load up energies on my Articuno the old-fashioned way, since, again, Misty did not show up for us here. So this deck actually ends up being situationally easy to build. Um, if you happen to have two Articuno EX, it's a very, very easy deck to play, but that's kind of the big hurdle to overcome, right? Um, Articuno EX is certainly playable in pretty much any deck that's playing water right now. Starmie EX being the biggest example, uh, which I'm, I only need one more Starmie EX, and I can play that deck. Uh, looking forward to trying that. It seems like a very cool card, but... Um, yeah, I think Articuno is not only playable, like I said, as a solo card, but I think, yeah, I think just about literally any water deck, I would probably just put two Articuno in. So, very worthwhile Pokemon to have. Alright, so here I am going to red card. Uh, I'm not just looking to get rid of those potions, but my opponent also has seven in hand. Uh, also, I have another red card, so I'm definitely fine using it right now. Now, a lot of the time, like I said, you will pair the red card with the hand scope as a sort of combo to disrupt your opponent. But sometimes your opponent just has enough cards in hand, <laughs> where the hand or where the uh, the hand scope becomes less relevant, and you're just going to red card for advantage. Uh, here, my opponent did find a Pokeball and is going for their Charmander setup now. Dome fossil on top of that. So are they playing Kabutops as well? That's interesting. Or maybe they're just using it. I don't know. That is actually really interesting, because I don't know if they ever, like, actually have fighting energy, so I'd be very surprised if they are actually on Kabutops. Alright, ugh, this Inferno Dance getting three energy on the Charmander is so brutal here. So brutal. Alright, now I can go for my third water energy on my active Articuno. This is going to put the Blizzard online. Which will not only deal 80 to the active, but 10 to each on the bench. It's a very, very good attack from Articuno. It's one of the reasons why it can kind of get away with soloing boards. Is because it can hit the bench too. And it makes, uh, I mean, it makes Sabrina a lot more of a threat, so. Alright, here they're going to start finally attacking with the Moltres, but uh, a little bit too little too late. So here I'm going to hand scope, because I do have a red card in hand and see what's going on. Uh, I see they have double potion Charizard. So, in this case, I definitely don't want to red card, even though, like, ugh, the potions aren't ideal, but if they have a Charizard without a Charmeleon, that's pretty good for me. What I can basically do is wait to use the red card until they evolve their Charmander into a Charmeleon, then hopefully they will not be on Charizard anymore. Uh, that's not just how you use red card in this deck, by the way, that's also how I try to use red card in a lot of decks. 
Um, if my opponent has like five or more in hand, I, I'll probably just red card for the advantage, but there are a lot of times where I'll wait for them to like play a stage two evolution. Okay, like this, yep. Okay, they're using one of the potions on the Charmeleon here. Unfortunately, that means I can't one-shot it. But looks like they're just retreating it anyway. Yeah, they spent two energy to do that, putting a third on, and now they're going to Inferno Dance. They don't even need a land of heads here, though. Even if they landed three tails, their Charizard would still be online next turn. But it looks like they're going to land one, two, two more. Been getting pretty lucky with the heads there. So the Charmeleon has five, which is definitely scary. So... Yeah, uh, I'm going to start with the Water Energy on my Bench Articuno. Then I'm going to Sabrina. I want to do this first, because I want to force them into a situation where... I mean, they're probably just put out the Dome Fossil here, but if they put out the Dome Fossil, then I just win. So they're just going to concede. <laughs> I forgot they just conceded here. Oh, because duh, the, the, the weakness on the Charmeleon. I would just win no matter what here. So, duh. <laughs> um, but... If I wasn't going to lethal that turn, I would have the option to use the red card to shuffle back their hand. Even though they only have two cards and they get to draw an extra card, I know one of the two cards in hand is Charizard. And there's at least a chance with the red card that they won't have a Charizard by the time they go into their turn. Uh, it's a bit of a risky way to use it, or at least it can be. But uh, it is certainly an option there. And, I mean, as you can see, it might seem a little wild that Articuno by itself is enough to win games, but... I mean, as we saw there, it's not hard for that to be the case. I didn't even resolve Misty. Imagine if I had resolved Misty and even landed one heads, but like two? Uh, it would have just been over so much more quickly if I could Ice Wing from turn one. All right. Wrapping up this game here, let's check out the next one. And that is going to be against Mewtwo. Good old Mewtwo. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what order these are going up in. This Articuno EX, I'm thinking might go up last of all the deck profiles I'm going to work on, so... But I haven't even recorded that yet. I have two Mewtwo now, is what I'm getting at. So I have Mewtwo Gardevoir. And even though I haven't recorded gameplay for it yet, it might actually end up going out before this deck profile. That's my long way of saying that I'm uh, quite eager to show off Mewtwo EX. And just play that deck more. I've only played like two games with it so far off camera. My right, opponent only opened a Ralts, which is pretty good for me. Especially if we talk. Oh my god. This is one of those games where if we find a Misty and we can just Blizzard. Can you hear my opponent's got a red card right off the bat? I kind of don't agree with that line. They do draw me into the Misty here. So yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty eager about that. But yeah, like, red carding for basically a minus one. I don't know. To be fair, if you read that as shuffle random card from your opponent's hand back into their deck, that is still pretty solid. But I do think there is better potential use for it. So, yeah, I'm going for the Misty right off the bat. I'm just like, please, please, no, we landed Tails on the first one again. Ah, oh, yeah, I, 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 I can see this being a thing. <laughs> well, I've already heard from some people about how, like, yeah, Misty always... I mean, it's that classic TCG trope. Like, oh, the luck-based card always hits for my opponent, never for me. But right, They're evolving their active Ralts into a Curlia, putting in energy on the bench Mewtwo, passing back over to me. So even though I don't have a hand scope, I might just use a red card here, because I'm thinking they might have a Gardevoir in hand, but let's see what I draw off the Professor's... Well, I... Definitely should have Pokeballed first. That was a huge misplay. Oh my god. If I had drawn my second Articuno, I would have been very sad there. Just deck fitting in general, you know. But uh, thankfully we didn't get punished there. Okay, so I decided to red card here. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to take the chance. and Just based on the way they're playing, I think they might have the Gardevoir in hand. I decided to just go for it here. Of course, there's always a chance I just drew them into the Gardevoir. I mean, you can make an argument either way, you know? So I'll Ice Wing the Curlia, putting it down to 40. Okay, they have a Pokeball, which have, they have no targets left, so they have a Mewtwo in hand, and here's that. Okay, putting in energy on the benched Mewtwo. Oh, they have the X Speed for the Curlia. And they have a Hand Scope as their last card. I was very surprised to see that from my opponent. Um, 
I don't think hand scope is worth playing in, except for exactly in this deck, and trust me, the second we get any kind of a better item card, the hand scope is going to be the first card to go in this list. I would not recommend playing Pokedex either. I think I think hand scope is actually better than Pokedex. For sure. I mean, yeah, looking at your opponent's hand is way better than information looking at your top three cards. Definitely, definitely. Especially because between like Pokeball, well, I guess mostly with Pokeball, and opponent's red cards, your deck's gonna get shuffled a decent bit anyway. I right, went for the Sabrina here. Um because the way I see it, I can either. KO this Curlia, they won't put it out. Start working on the other Mewtwo, or maybe maybe try to get a point from the other routes. But I'm really not in a good position at all here. This Mewtwo on their end is, like, getting all kinds of set up. They put out their other Mewtwo. And I guess from here... Yeah, they don't have any cards in hand, so my hand scope red card combo actually just doesn't do anything right now. The gen actually really sucks for me. <laughs> um... Yeah, we're gonna go for the Blizzard and try to two-shot the Mewtwo that's currently active. There's no way it can cleanly retreat unless they top-decked X-Speed and went energy onto active Mewtwo plus X-Speed, which I would be fine with, but yeah. No, I, like I figured, they're just gonna load up on the currently benched Mewtwo. So that thing can side-drive next turn, which is a very scary prospect, but I think I might even... Yeah, I'm debating if I want to Ice Wing or Blizzard here. The potion actually just doesn't do anything. I think I might even Ice Wing here. Because that's the thing, right? Like, if I Blizzard and KO... Yeah, I do just actually Blizzard here. I think I should have Ice Winged. Because if I Blizzard and KO, they just bring out the Mewtwo. It's got four energy. It side drives over my current Articuno. I bring out my bench Articuno with one water energy. On my turn, I put a Water on, Ice Wing. Their turn, they put a Psychic on Mewtwo up to three, Psychic Sphere. Then I Blizzard. There's no way... Well, no. If I draw Giovanni, and they don't have any healing, and they don't also have Gardevoir, which now they have, that was the only way I think I was ever winning this game, is if all of those conditions were, were met. If they didn't draw Potion or Gardevoir, and I found Giovanni within the next couple of turns, but... Nah, they've got the Gardevoir here, which is definitely going to be able to accelerate them enough to to be able to... Oh, you know what? Okay. Does this Misty change anything? Uh, I don't... Wait, I think it does, actually. Because, well, no, it doesn't because of the Gardevoir. If there weren't for the Gardevoir, it might have. Oh, okay, hang on. This Sabrina might might be something. No, don't miss the. I should Sabrina here, right? You always Sabrina here. Yeah, because I realized, like, okay, if Mewtwo stays up, then on the next turn, their side drive is up. So, yep, there we go. I'm glad. <laughs> go past me. <laughs> okay, they're going to bring in the Gardevoir. And I just need to land one heads. Oh, no, I can't miss the. That's right. Because I already used Sabrina. So, I just have to put this, this uh, Gardevoir down to one. Um, but, dang, that potion, because I was going to say, okay, they can, they can put an energy on the Guard of War with its effect, and then they can use their energy for turn on the Mewtwo, but even then, I would survive the Psychic Sphere and I could Blizzard for lethal, but that potion was enough to put them out of lethal range, so, ah, uh, that's, that's going to be it. Oh, and if I had had another Sabrina... Or did I use both already? I actually can't remember. I think I... No, I did use both already. Yeah, there's the Giovanni. But that's not going to matter here. Dang! You know, it's it is so close. It really came down to my opponent having a potion. If it weren't for that potion, I would have uh, been able to KO that Gardevoir for lethal. But it was still a very close game. A very, very tight game. So... Yeah, here comes the side drive from the Mewtwo. Oh, it's even got five psychic energy. Just so much overkill. KOing my Articuno, knocking it down to zero, and that is gonna get it for them. Yeah, it doesn't matter, because like Articuno's your only two Pokemon, so once those are KO'd, you always just lose. <laughs> but uh There we go. GG's to my opponent though. That was a very that was a very, very good back and forth game. I I uh I, I highly enjoyed that one. But we do have one more game we're going to take a look at here. 
before we finish off, and it's going to be against Venusaur EX, a deck that I have also covered as well. So uh, if you are interested, feel free to check out the channel there. I've got plenty of pocket deck profiles by this point, and I also do Illustrals content, if that piques your interest. So if you're interested in either or, I would definitely recommend subscribing, and hugely appreciate anybody who does. So... Alright, so we have, we opened a Misty again. So this is weirdly a deck that kind of wants to go first. If you open Misty, you absolutely want to go first. If you don't, you, you would still prefer to go second. But we do have the potential to turn one, like I could turn one win here, potentially. If I, if I actually rolled three heads on the Misty, that would be enough to do it. So let's see what we get here. I'm hoping for at least one, and it's zero. It's actually just zero. <laughs> uh, three Misty's activated this game, and none of them have put on a single energy. So, okay, their hand contains Erica, Ivysaur, Pokeball, and Prof's Research, I think. Yeah, again, I, I'm thinking in hindsight, I maybe should be using the hand scope, like saving it for when I also have red card. But I don't know, I, I don't mind having the info either on what's in my opponent's hand, you know? Okay, so I'm going to put energy on the Bulbasaur. So yeah, it looks like they're definitely the Lilligant variant. But they opened with the Bulbasaur, so they had to put that in the main. Or in the active, rather. Alright, Professor's Research, and we find Sabrina and another Professor's Research. It's not bad, but... I don't know, two supporters isn't really exactly what you're looking to find off of Prof's Research. But this deck is more, like I said, a control deck, so its games tend to go longer anyway, so it's not as big of a deal for us. Service for a hand, potion, X speed, X speed. Yeah, the X speed, I could honestly see that. So, like, like I said earlier in the video, hand scope would be the first card I would cut for a better item. After that, it'd probably just be... Well, because I've, I've heard of builds of this that don't play the Pokeballs at all, which I understand... But the same, because you like are always going to get one of your only two Pokemon, right? But I think having that second Articuno on the bench is quite important. I think enough so that, I don't know, I was thinking like I'd probably cut X-Speeds before I cut Pokeballs. Maybe I'd cut a red card, like one of the two red cards first, but... Because the X-Speeds don't really ever... By the time you need to swap out an Articuno, you know, you have enough energies, so... Using another hand scope here, their hands Erica Potion Venusaur. I'm absolutely gonna red card. Do not want that Ivysaur to evolve. Alright, gonna put the water energy on. Let's Ice Wing, threaten to Kale it with the Blizzard next turn. And yeah, I really hope they didn't draw another Venusaur anyway. I mean, it's always a possibility with red card. Yeah, the use of red card outside of decks like this, <laughs> decks like this, as if there's another 18 trainer deck. Um, the use of red card out in like a quote unquote normal deck is is an interesting thing to think about. Like how worth it is it, you know? Yeah, they end up using the Erica, which I kind of figured they would, but I'm also not like that's I'm not I don't have a problem with that. That's completely fine. Uh, perfect top deck here. Uh, we have this Giovanni, and I'm just going to use that in combination with Blizzard to KO this Ivysaur. Like, even if they don't top deck a Venusaur, still just being able to get three of their energy off the board is so good. That's like, a lot of the times, <laughs> you'll be in a situation where the, the KO, the real value you get on it is the energies that were on that Pokemon. Because it basically means your opponent, like, W not wasted, necessarily, but, like, it basically negated all those turns of energy set up, right? The f the, if your opponent has fewer energies on board than you do, then you're probably in a winning state. Especially if it's by more than one. Alright, so here I'm going to Sabrina out their board. I can kill either of the Pokemon. It's probably just going to be Pet Lil that's going to come out here. I'd be shocked if they actually swapped in the Ivysaur, because then their Venusaur setup would just be dead, and their deck would kind of have no point. <laughs> um, you see, we did finally top deck that second Articuno. I mean, this is what I was saying, too, like, with the Pokeballs. Like, like yeah, my two Pokeballs might be dead now, but I think it's overall worth it having a chance to get into that 
second Articuno sooner. Because there's a lot of decks where they could have easily KO'd my Articuno by now, and uh, I would just lose because I don't have another Pokemon on my bench. Yeah, we'll definitely Blizzard to deal some incidental damage. The incidental damage is very important on the Lilligan because that bumps it down to 80, which means I can now one-shot that with Blizzard when it comes back in. And uh, I've already got two points, so unless they really pull off a miracle here, I'm just going to win on my next turn. Okay, nope, they have a potion, so the Lilligant does survive one turn. They're building up that Ivysaur. They're really, yeah, they're not even trying to put energy on the Lilligant. They're just building up the Ivysaur, which I kind of think is a misplay. Like, they could have put those two grass energies on the Lilligant, and it could be attacking for 50, and then also the Ivysaur would have a grass energy on it. But yeah, all Blizzard chipping away at that Ivysaur as well. Ivysaur is at, what, 90? So if Venusaur came down, it would still be at 160? God, that thing's a monster. 190 HP is so much. They are swapping in the Ivysaur. Okay. And then they're using Erica on the Ivysaur. Interesting. Okay, Razor Leaf. Okay, that does, that does threaten to two-shot my Articuno. And the potion doesn't help necessarily. So this is actually an instance where I will be using my X-Speeds, funnily enough. And I'll just use both of them here. It's gonna make the Articuno's retreat cost free, so I don't lose any energy swapping the new one in. Not that it really matter if, if I, you know, had to use one. Alright, now the Ivysaur and the Lilligant are both at 10, so... Now even if Venusaur came down at this point, I could still just Blizzard and KO the Lilligant on the bench for lethal. Sabrina ends up being their last card here. So, <laughs> they'll cheekily pull in my Articuno and, and uh, KO it before the game ends, which I appreciate. I appreciate. So, yeah, we lose one of our Articunos, but we'll just win off the other one, of course. Yeah, oh, they just concede right here. So, that's actually going to go ahead and do it right there. So, all right. Uh... Thanks, as always, for watching. I super appreciate you. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this one. So I think without further ado, um, we're just going to go ahead and move on to the end here. Oh, but also, like I said before, uh, if you want more content, definitely make sure that you are subscribing. Like I put out a lot of these Pokemon vids. But thanks for watching. This is XLex. I'm signing out and hoping that you have a fantastic day.